Sega, birthplace of everyone's favorite hedgehog Sonic, a household name in the gaming industry and at some point in time fiercest competitor of Nintendo has recently released their latest anthology in the Sega Genesis collection. A celebration of some of their finest games and among them some of the very best games video game history. And the moment Sega sent me over this review copy to check out, I went ahead and ordered a clone of the original 6 button Sega Genesis controller in order to avoid any odd button mappings and to fully experience what what Nintendo. And the controller arrived with a guarantee from the seller that it would absolutely work with the Nintendo Switch, which of course it absolutely didn't. So I will be giving away this brand new Genesis controller for free. If you enjoy PC gaming and you would like to have at it with this little controller, be sure to enter the competition down in the description below. And while you're at it, hit that like button as it helps out with the search results. And welcome to the next level. The Sega Genesis Collection packs a punch as it comes with over 50 games. 51 to be exact. Good job on the marketing there Sega. It just came hot off the press, being released only last week both in brick and mortar stores as well as in the eShop. Usually in these reviews I approach the game head on, but in this case there are two ways of looking at it. The treatment of the collection as a whole and then there is the selection of games. To start off with the former, Sega has released and re-released some stellar collections during their long and celebrated history. Among them the Sonic Mega Collection for the GameCube, which I have played for countless hours, somehow being baffled about seeing Sonic, Tails and Knuckles being playable on a Nintendo platform, something just a few years prior was absolutely unheard of with the console wars in full effect. Upon starting the game we are graced with a kick ass opening video, Signature Sega. Shortly after we find ourselves in a bedroom with our beloved Sega Genesis console and a collection of games, miniatures and posters adorning the walls. Too eager to start off? Head straight for your game shelf, pick one of the boxes and pop in the cartridge to get going. The emulator can be customized to get your preferred graphic style, including the option for scan lines, various outputs for your pixel scaling, mirrored display, screen stretching, there are different border art pieces for you to choose from, an option for screen curving to match the classic CRT television sets, and the option to overclock your Genesis by turning off the sprite drawing limitation. It would certainly have been neat to be able to see a comparison before applying a filter and getting back in the game, but otherwise it all works splendidly. As a collection of emulated games, it is good to see there are 4 save slots for each game, which can be accessed by long pressing the minus button. Another way of saving your game is by using the quick save option by simply pulling the right joystick of your joycon downwards and upwards to load your last quick save. As is common with some of these late 80s and 90s games, the difficulty can be more than tough at times. And I cannot praise Sega enough for introducing the rewind and fast forward options, allowing the player to retrace their steps and change the course of history, or to go fast forward in order to speed up dialogues or endless walking cycles. Especially the rewind option is very welcome in games such as Sega's Flicky. Being able to go back and forth allows you to find just the right angles to slide past those nimble cats and get those little chirps to safety. A feature though that is not usable whilst taking on the special challenges. The collection comes with a ton of games and what is neat to see is that some of them even offer an alternative edition. For example the beat em up Streets of Rage series which I have bought and played to death in the Nintendo Wii's virtual console days, come in both the western versions as well as the Japanese, where they were called bare knuckle. On top of all this, Sega included an option for online multiplayer and there are additional challenges for you to go through which might take some of the most dedicated gamers by surprise by running through Sonic backwards, completing Streets of Rage without any pickups, etc. The online multiplayer has a simple setup 
in which you can filter the games you would like to play and connect for some retro action. All of this definitely adds to the replayability value of this collection. It feels a little odd though that the aforementioned challenges are version dependent, meaning they are applicable to for example the western version whilst being unavailable for the Japanese versions. In terms of the game selection, we see some of the best games to ever see the light of day. RPGs like Fantasy Star 4, Shining Force and Landstalker. Beat em ups such as Streets of Rage 1, 2 and 3, the Golden Axe trilogy and Comics Zone, one of the most original games out there aesthetically for sure. 2D platformers Sonic 1 and 2, Rise Star and Shinobi 3. And games such as Gunstar Heroes, Bonanza Bros and Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine are timeless pieces and offer literally hundreds of hours of gameplay. Even though I have bought a lot of these titles some 10 years back on the Wii, I find myself playing them over and over again on the Nintendo Switch, alone or with a friend. They simply are just that good. Admittedly, in a collection of disco, there can't be all winners and there are some games they could have done without. like. Space Harrier 2, Shadow Dancer and Sonic Spinball. Instead of those, I would much rather see some games that I definitely feel missing from this collection. Titles such as Contra, Castlevania and Mortal Kombat. And while it is nice seeing Virtua Fighter 2 being included, a Street Fighter game would have been greatly appreciated and somehow the collection is simply missing out on any racing games. And I think that Virtua Racing should have made its appearance for sure. Another thing I feel missing from a collection of this scope are in-game manuals. It would have been little effort on the part of the developer to add in a digitalized version of the manual, which would have added value to the collection as well as giving players some much needed backstory to these games. And in light of this, after selecting a game box, it would have been neat to see a 3D version of it, showcasing the original box art front, back and spine. Although nothing critical, a missed opportunity for sure. The Sega Genesis collection is a testament to video game history without losing its value in today's market with some absolutely fantastic titles which have stood the test of time. And although admittedly this collection does feel a bit catered towards people who grew up in that era of the Sega Genesis, at the same time it is the perfect entry point for anyone into the rich history of Sega as the game retails for only 30 US dollars and with 51 games on the shelf there is something for everyone and you never know Sega might release some paid or free DLC along the lines adding in some more Genesis titles for you to enjoy. Now on a last note although the Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons work their magic I implore you Sega to finally release a first party official pair of Sega Genesis controllers so we can fully experience the collection the way it was meant to be. Let me know in the comment section down below if you're planning on picking this one up. I know there are a lot of people excited for this collection. Don't forget to enter the competition as you can win this Genesis controller. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I will see you next time.